This show will take you to your safe place. As always, we will jump every hurdle to bring you the best stuff. We will fight the wind and any other obstacles to bring these highlights right to you. Celebrate with us. Sports Night is next. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Shapiro. Hey, one more week, I believe, is Sports Night, and we are done yeah. for the year. Yeah, it's looking like uh, we're going to have a review show sometime next week. Um, Monday, only, Tuesday, only, Wednesday. Only one, only one athlete remaining in action yep. for uh, Coon Rapids High School. Everybody else has, has wrapped it up in the past week. Yeah, so we've got a lot to bring you today and, and a number of different things to show you. Yeah, we'll start with the baseball team. Cardinals had the four seed and a home game for the first round of the playoffs, despite the fact that their opponent, the fifth-seeded Cougars, had handed Coon Rapids its worst loss of the regular season. Both teams finished 11-9 and with Centennial winning their one meeting 12-2 in five innings. It was the only time all year the Cardinals pitching staff gave up more than six runs. Still, Coon Rapids got the high seed, which may have given the Cougars a little extra motivation. There wasn't a lot of offense in this one, but Centennial making the most opportunities. Wyatt Shaporster with a sacrifice fly in the, third, in the first. Cougars score the first run of the game without the benefit of a hit. Coon Rapids answers in the home half of the first. Jake Hansen going to the opposite field with two outs. Avery Lehman and Noah Wolf score. That gives the Cardinals the two to one edge. Same score, top of four. Runners at second and third with one out. Brian Pearson lines it just over the leaping Dumovic at short. Both runs are going to score and the Cougars are back in front three to two. They pad it later in the inning. This is how you do the suicide squeeze. Perfectly laid down. Casey Leiser drops it. Pearson slides in with no chance of a play at the plate. Centennial in front by two. Cardinals trying to rally in the bottom of the seventh. Ball gets away from the catcher. Robert Morissette is coming home. He slides in safely, and it's a one-run game. Two outs now. Runner at second, John Olson at the plate. He's going to ground it to short, and the throw is just a little bit offline. It's dropped. Johnson will pick it up. Sees the runner trying to get home. Lehman tagged out for the final out to end the game, and Centennial holds on 4-3. to three. It was a bang-bang play at the plate. If he's safe, <laughs> we go to extras. It's tough to watch that again. You know, the, the, they were benefited by the error at first, and, and unfortunately the throw out at the plate ended their, ended their game. And it, it was a tough one because they, it looked like they were starting to make a little bit of a comeback and starting to get back into this contest. I mean, only trailing by two runs and able to uh, almost tie that thing up. Well, and it was two teams that have had the same problem, lack of offense. There were only five total hits yep. through the first six innings in that game. Yeah, absolutely. Different from that first contest, at least on the centennial side of the, of the ledger. Absolutely. It dropped the Cardinals down into the, uh, the lower bracket trying to make their way back. First up, they, fa they faced off. Uh, actually, uh, that's my turn. It's your turn. It is. How about we talk? You go. Okay, good. Well, th thanks for setting that up for me. The Cardinals knew if they wanted to make it back through the lower bracket, they would need to have a bit more offense. Three runs on five hits was just not going to cut it. On Wednesday, they are at Wintercrest to face the eighth seed in Spring Lake Park Panthers, who have been shut out by the top seed Champlain Park in the first round. Coon Rapids won the regular season meeting with the Panthers 5-2. Now facing elimination, they knew they had to keep a big cat down. Game tied at one, bottom of the fourth. Zach Raymond fires it to the gap left center. Nick, Lo Nick Lockenen is going to score from second. The RBA double puts Coon Rapids back in front by a 2-1 score. Nick crossing the plate, still in the fourth. Two outs, Avery Lehman grounds to short, but the ball is misplayed and goes to the outfield. Raymond will score easily from third, and the inning continues. Noah Wolf is up next. He sends a high fly to deep left center. Lehman was off on contact. He'll score from second to make it a 4-1 lead. Wolf is in with a standing at second with an RBI double. Let's move to the sixth. One on, nobody out for Tyler George. He's going to hammer this one to left. Nobody's going to get that one. George is only at bat of the ball game. It's a two-run shot. Cards up 6-2. At that point, they survive with a 6-3 win. And I believe they had 11 hits. Is that correct? 11 hits. Something so, like that, yeah. yeah. So they, they were able to hit the ball, get things going. Well, and, the, and that's the, the problem, especially in the playoffs. You have to have that type of offense yep. consistently. Yep. Uh, certainly a bit of lower, lower uh, defense on the field in front of them uh, when they face Spring Lake Park. But uh, 
Uh, they were going to try and keep it going. They faced off against Moundsview, the number three seed, and they upset the Mustangs with a 9-5 victory and a lot of offense again in this one. Three for four was Avery Lehman. He scored twice. Uh, Olsen drove in three runs, had just one hit, one for three with a double. Zach Raymond had a couple RBI, scored a run as well. Tyler George, two for four from the plate, scored. Jake Dumovic got the win in relief coming in and uh, cleaning up five innings of scoreless ball. He threw just four hits with three strikeouts. Unfortunately, they went right back at the Centennial Cougars and the Cougars made it a season sweep, an eight to one victory. There you see it, just not a lot of offense, just four hits in the game for the Cardinals. Nick Harold takes the loss, pitched three and two thirds of an inning, gave up five, hit, uh, five runs on 10 hits. Four of those runs were earned, had one walk and three strikeouts. And as we look at the brackets, that is who remains. Uh, Centennial will face off against top seeded Champlain Park. Uh, and the winner of that one, that game uh, is tonight, Monday night. Uh, over at CHS Field. The championship will be on Wednesday. The number two seeded Titino Grace Eagles, the lone undefeated team remaining. Uh, so whoever comes out of that game between Centennial and Champlain Park would have to beat uh, the Eagles twice to get to state. Well, the Cougars have had the Cardinals number this year, unfortunately, and eight to one in that final. Again, just four hits, and they kind of reverted back to that lack of offense in that last game. Yeah, it's uh, it's something they battled all season yep. long, and uh, the. Uh, Pitching wise, uh, they kept the score down all, all season long. Their pitchers gave them a great chance. They did uh, to they win did. almost every night, yeah. uh, and uh, just the bats just never. Yeah, solid defense as going. well. But you're right, the bats uh, they didn't get the hits. They didn't produce the runs they needed, and that's why they're not playing any longer. Right. Well, the softball team was the final Cinderella story in the Section 7-4A tournament when play resumed last week. The top three seeds were still alive, and so were the seventh-seeded Cardinals. Coon Rapids was hoping to hold on to their glass slipper a little longer when they faced crosstown rival Blaine on Wednesday. The third-seeded Bengals beat the Cardinals 9-5 in the regular season, but still the Cardinals were confident they could play with and even beat Blaine to keep their season alive. Coon Rapids gets the start they wanted. Alyssa Hansen laces this one to right. Abby Graham will score, and the Cardinals take a very early lead. But things unravel quickly in the bottom half of the first as Bengals mount an impressive two-out rally. Twelve straight batters reach base with two gone. They have seven hits, including this grand slam by Ramsey Parent. That made it 8-1. to one. There were two Cardinals errors and four walks that kept the inning going. Kylie Cassidy also goes deep before the end of the first. This one a three run home run 13 to one Bengals after the first inning. Coon Rapids trying to get back into this one third inning two on and one out. Jake Gomez lost one to right. She's out but Alyssa Hansen is coming home on the sacrifice. Kennedy Kerr will slide in safely at third. Meg Sheck is up next. And she bounces it right back through the box. Carroll will score, and it's 13-3. Fifth inning, bases loaded, one out. Graham pops it up just beyond short. Bross can't make the catch. Gomez will come in to score. That forced the game to go to seven, but the hole was just too big, and the Cardinals' season ends with a 14-6 loss. And it was just uh, a, a tough one. You know, Kayla Thowen has been... Uh, outstanding she for has. them all season she long. Has. She has been their go-to uh, ace, and uh, the Bengals just had her figured out. Yeah, they really did. It's really tough to come back from that kind of deficit. You're, you're down 13-1 at that point. They did a good job of keeping it from uh, being over in uh, in five innings, and they actually out-hit the Bengals. I think it was 14-12. So they were able to do some positive things, but when you get 13 runs scored on you and you're down by you're down by 12, it's really tough yeah. to dig out of the hole. Yeah, that was uh, that was just uh, one of the most impressive two-out rallies. Uh, I have ever witnessed, and it just kept going. Unfortunately, it meant the end of the season uh, for the Coon Rapids Cardinals. It did, unfortunately. Well, the state track and field championships will be held at the end of this week at Hamlin University, and one Cardinal star will be there representing for the third straight year. The Cardinals are hoping to get a couple more competitors into the big event, but this is a very tough section, and the championship meets a very tough competition for the few qualifying spots. Both Coon Rapids squads are relatively young, so while they didn't get more athletes to the next level, they all gained valuable experience as to what it will be to able to do in the future. They're running in the rain at Hamlin last week. First up, the boys 1600 meter run. Nate Muggenberg with a great race. He leaves the pack behind, is finishing by himself. His time of 435.44, though, only good enough for eighth place overall. 
Junior Callie Harris running in the 100 meter hurdles. She won her heat in prelim, but she finishes fourth in the final with a time of 15.78. Missed state by two spots, but she did qualify in the 100 hurdles. The distance teams, as you see there, good job by her. She'll make it to the big dance. The distance teams are a strength for the Cardinals. It should be for a long while. Seventh grader Alana Headland is the Cardinals' top finisher in the 1600 meter, taking ninth place in a 532-36. Finally, Cassie Dixon getting the Cardinals started in the 400, 4 by 200 meter relay. Kelly Lawrence handles the next leg, hands off to Brielle Clark at the midway point the race and then Brianna Clark will anchor the event and finish strong for the Cardinals who finished fifth in the event with a time of 147.75. A pretty is a decent showing even though they only had the one athlete go to state pretty good showing for the for the uh, track squad. There's a look at some of the other top finishers for the boys. The Cardinals finished 15th place just seven and a half points uh, total in the meet for the Cardinals. Uh, Gullickson was seventh place in the pole vault. Breitbach was ninth in the two mile run. The four by 800 meter relay team was eighth place. And then some uh, other finishes, Tim Mandyke, 14th place in the shot put. And in the long jump, Cardinals take 17th, 18th and 21st. On the girls side, a few more higher finishes. They finish middle of the pack uh, in the section. Callie Harris, as we talked about, will go to state in the 300 meter hurdles. She finished second in a time of 44.81 seconds. It's the juniors third straight trip to the state tournament. Cassie Dixon finished fourth in the 400 meter dash. The four by four relay team also had a fourth place finish. Kamika Hurdle was fifth in the pole vault going up and over at 10 foot two inches. <sighs> Dang it, I forgot to look. I think that's Brielle, but it may be Brianna in the high jump, sixth place, five foot. <laughs> De Devin Vanseth was 11th in the discus. I do have to say, though, uh, if you when you watch that, that four by two, yep. look at the stride of Brielle Clark as she takes off when she gets the baton. Uh, that girl, she's just, she's a sophomore. The yep, other three absolutely. on that relay team are all seniors. Uh, Brielle will be will be one that they definitely look forward to, to get them points each and every meet. Yes, she will. Uh, next season. Uh, girls golf team finished up its season with section play last week at the Lynx at North Fork. Cardinals finished in 10th place, so they beat a couple of teams, and that is uh, that is showing improvement. Rachel Bissett, the low scorer, got under the century mark with a 99. Bell Wynn had a 102, Ali Carver a 104, Ali McDonald 113, Callie Lackinen, Lackinen was a 114, and Lexi Herman finished her season with a 117. No one, unfortunately, able to qualify uh, for the uh, state tournament. Yep. Uh, Bissett missed this qualifying for day two of the section tournament by just two strokes. Uh, boys lacrosse team probably got the best draw they could have hoped for in the Section 7 tournament. With their winless record, they were the lowest seed, but first round they were up against a team they had played pretty well against. The Cardinals lost to Centennial 12-4, but in the second half of that game, they played right with the Cougars, so they knew it was a team they could be competitive with. The key would be to getting off to a good start and not letting Centennial build the lead early. Cardinals get the start they want. Third minute of play, Miguel Ganosa cutting to the middle from the far side, fires a low, puts Coon Rapids on the board first. Cardinals leading scorer would be leaned on in this contest. Centennial leading 2-1 late in the first quarter. Long shot is handled by Boyer, but Jeremiah Horst is there to pressure. He forces the turnover in close. No chance for Boyer to stop him from there. Cougars up 3-1 after the first quarter. And they build on it big time in the second. Great possession team, keeping the Cardinals caged up. They play it around the perimeter. Zach Schrantz will take the leaping shot that beats Boyer and increases the lead to 7-1. It's 9-1 before the Cardinals find the back of the net again. Miguel Ganoso with the underhand shot for his second of the game. That comes with less than 30 seconds left in the half. And again, the Cards have a mountain to climb. Move to the fourth. Coon Rapids trailing by nine. Ganoso nets another, but way too big a hole to dig out of. Centennial ends the Cardinals season with a 12-5 loss. And it was very similar, again, from the first meeting, uh, you know, except for Coon Rapids came out, got that first goal, but then give up nine straight, and all of a sudden you're in that great big hole. Uh, you keep them, keep them close, it might be a different story in the second half. Well, yeah, it gives them a little momentum to score that opening goal, but, but again, there again, their defense uh, didn't do what they needed to do and to let those kind of goals in and develop that lead. You talk about it, they played from a huge hole, and it was really too big to... to 
dig well, out and, of. And what we noticed when we watched the first contest against Centennial is Centennial is very good once they have possession yep. of keeping the Cardinals boxed up and getting multiple opportunities to score on each possession and it's just very tough uh, to pressure and and get the ball away from them and get to the other end where you might have an opportunity to stop that uh, momentum. Absolutely. So, take a quick look at the brackets. Uh, the Blaine Bengals and the Anoka Tornadoes, the top two seeds, and they will meet in the championship on Wednesday. Blaine uh, blowing past both Forest Lake and Champlin Park. Centennial after the win over Coon Rapids lost to three seed Champlin Park 10 to five. Spring Lake Park, a minor upset over and over the five, over the four, and then uh, play close to number one seed Anoka, but Anoka survives with an 11-10 win. And so Anoka and Blaine will face off for the championship again on Wednesday. Girls lacrosse team uh, was the number two seed going into the tournament. So they had a bye, didn't have to play in the play-in game. They got number 10 at Spring Lake Park, who had a bit of an upset to get to them. And the Cardinals took care of business 16 to five over the Panthers on Wednesday of last week. Lily Hackett, the leading scorer with four goals to assist. Helen Nelson had a hat trick plus a helper. Allie Misquick had four goals, and Kayla Ross had a pair for herself. Well, the Cardinals were back home on Friday night hosting the six-seeded Centennial Cougars in the section semifinal. Coon Rapids dominated the regular season meeting, winning 13-5, winning but that was early in the season. The Cougars were coming off an 8-7 upset over third seed at Anoka, and the game they trailed 6-1 at the half. Now they were looking to keep that momentum going and had the sights set on knocking off the Cardinals. Cardinals start the scoring just over three minutes into the game. Allie Misquick finds a hole in the defense and darts through and shoots low to put Coon Rapids on the board first. The higher seeded Cardinals were controlling the action early. Alyssa Brazier, Brazier uh, draws the defense and dishes to Jordan Keller to finish the game going exactly how the Cardinals had planned. But the Cougars don't falter and their patience pays off. Great pay pass from behind the net to find Marissa Waldock out front for the goal. Tie the game at three midway through the first half. Centennial led 7-5 at the break, but the Cardinals fly back to start the second. Lily Hackett feeds Helen Nelson streaking through the middle. Her first of the game tied it once again. But that didn't last very long. The Cougars dominated ground balls in this one at just more possession time. Chloe Coleman scores one out front. That gave Centennial a 10-7 advantage. They never let up. Final minute of play. Good pass to get Brianna Peterson down low. She scores to seal the deal. Cardinal season ends with a 12-8 loss. Centennial advanced to the finals. Another big upset for the Cougars. Yeah, it was. And, and again, it, it came down to possession. You know, we talked to Coach DJ before the game, and uh, his big concern was ground balls. They have to win ground balls and have more possession. Uh, and in this game, they absolutely did not do that. Uh, the Centennial Cougars were owning the ground balls, keeping the Cardinals in their end. Uh, and even more difficult to force turnovers in your defensive end in the girls' game than it is in the boys because you can't hit. Right. So Centennial did a great job of keeping possession of the ball and making sure that they made those opportunities count. One of the things that I found very surprising was uh, how – Helen Nelson was was virtually non-existent exactly. on the offensive end. Uh, Lily Hackett had a nice game, I thought, but uh, they really needed to get their top gun going. Uh, Kayla Ross was held off the scoreboard as well. Well, you know, a couple of things I noticed, and you, you, you talked about Helen Nelson. She was uh, covered by two players most yeah. of the game. And the, and the Cougars goaltender played oh, really, really well. Stepped up, took a lot of opportunities away from Coon Rapids. It could have been a much different game. And Coach Dejoy was here a little earlier. We were talking about, you know, if, it, the way that, uh, that Lily Hackett played, exceptional. And if Nelson has her usual game, yeah, right. they're playing Wednesday night. Right, and I, and I think that's, that's a key. They had a good de uh, defensive strategy, did the Cougars, to take those leading scorers out of it. Yes, they let Lily get get in a couple of times yep. and, and get some goals, uh, but they really they they kept Nelson bottled up. They kept Ross bottled up. Miss Quick, I think, had the first goal of the game. I yep. don't think she scored again yep. after that. Uh, so they really did a nice job of the defensive end. But the the key was they won the ground balls. They kept possession, kept the Cardinals in the de Absolutely. defensive end. Come up with a huge upset. They beat number three seed. Uh, 
Anoka. They beat number two seed Coon Rapids. And now they are into the championship against number four seed Blaine, who upset the undefeated top seeded Champlain Park Re uh, Rebels 15 to nine on Friday night. So uh, one of those two teams uh, will represent section seven in the state tournament. That game coming up on Wednesday night. Yeah, you just never know what's going to happen. Any team can beat any other team on a given night. And you look at it, the four and six seed in the finals. Perfect yep. example. And uh, what that means, uh, of course, as we talked about at the beginning of the show, is that uh, team sports at Coon Rapids High School are over for the 2015-16 school year. Uh, best of luck to Callie Harris as she competes at the state tournament uh, coming up with preliminaries on Friday over at Hamlin University. Uh, we'll definitely update you on that next week on Sports Night. And then we'll be uh, reviewing, not only reviewing for the spring season, yep. uh, but uh, wrapping up for the whole year. It's crazy. It goes so quickly. It just seems like yesterday we were doing the preview for spring sports. So uh, to all of a sudden now be doing the review, it just seems like a few weeks ago. The spring flies by. Yes. Ask the seniors. They know for sure. But that's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTM for the entire crew, including Howie Shapiro. I'm Joe Young saying goodnight. Thank you.